Wrestling has been littered with dark storylines and risque angles, some of which have aged badly and come off as crude and distasteful. I'd love to slap you across your face, but it looks like God already beat me to it. There are plenty of well-known cases where things got uncomfortable and offensive. Terrorists are gonna burn down The Undertaker's house. His children are gonna be kidnapped. But today, we're focusing on stuff that either flew under the radar or isn't talked about a lot as we highlight 10 dark wrestling storylines and moments. Mark Henry's Attitude Era story arc is infamous for numerous moments with the likes of China and Mae Young. But there's also some segments you might not remember, such as the angle where Henry and the nation humiliated China and looked set to have their way with the ninth wonder of the world. Mark Henry, pucker your damn lips and give that piece of trash the thrill of her life. Following this, Mark began his infatuation with China, which led to a gimmick change for the world's strongest man. After becoming sexual chocolate, Mark continued to feature in X-rated segments. Oh, oh sweet Jesus! What's he got a penis? Including numerous therapy sessions after Henry admitted he was a sex addict. I'm a sex addict. What? What did he say? During these sessions, Henry revealed his first time having intercourse was at age eight with his sister, before later saying that they continued to have relations together long after. After the sex therapy failed, Mark helped Viscera win a human trafficking match against the Godfather, which gave Vis and the world's strongest man control of the hose. It took a relationship with Mae Young for Mark to finally change his ways. Henry impregnated Mae, who later gave birth to a hand. <laughs> Soon after, the world's strongest man was sent down to the WWF's developmental territory, OVW, in an effort to lose weight and rehone his skills, bringing an end to his time as sexual chocolate. On top of her work with Mark Henry, China later featured in another non-PG storyline, this time with Chris Jericho. Their feud included a violent segment where Jericho kidnapped China and tied her up backstage. Y2J then proceeded to attack the then Intercontinental Champion with a hammer, breaking her thumb in the process. <laughs> It's rare to see such a torturous angle like this in wrestling, especially since it involves a man assaulting a woman with a deadly weapon. It's the type of segment you'd expect to see in a personal blood feud, rather than a throwaway mid-card one such as this. Given how much the WWF were pushing the envelope during the Attitude Era, this segment often gets forgotten. As we've seen, the World Wrestling Federation was at its raunchiest and most controversial during the Attitude Era. There was no telling what crazy things would happen from one week to the next. There are countless more examples of risque moments and comments that flew under the radar. Putting that big retarded goof, they don't come any more retarded than that, but you put his brain in a parakeet, zing, fly backwards. This is where I draw the line right here. I'll what? be damned if I get in the ring with a damn fairy. England ain't nothing but a place full of Huh? Darky. Yeah. No idea. <laughs> Darky. Like his shirt. Dark. I want you to come. Yeah. Darky, boy. Oh, 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 oh. Point. Uh, Rock has had a snap back there. They have some good Chinese hospitals here in New York. Well, you stop that. Don't be so cynical. I'm not embarrassed to be with younger women, except when I drop them off at school. Well. There. Triple H in particular has been involved in various moments that haven't aged too well. I had Dr. Hung Lo. <laughs> Never mess with the Hung Lo. Now you get the father ass out of here. If I fool that, does that start your motor? You have a copy of the Pakistani magazine. Even after the Attitude Era had come and gone, the WWF continued to produce controversial television, such as when Batista had relations with Melina in December 2005. Melina had slept with the animal in hopes that doing so meant Dave would no-show the planned main event where he and Rey Mysterio were set to challenge Eminem for the tag titles. Batista instead thanked Melina for the warm-up and said he was going to destroy Mercury and Nitro. We have a deal, right? <laughs> No deal. Thanks for the warm up, though. Batista and Ray ended up winning the match to become the new tag champions. The next week, Melina prepared a written statement with her attorney and spoke about how Batista forced himself on her after she'd rejected his advances. I told Batista to stop! And he did it! Melina announced she was suing the animal for sexual harassment, even though what she described was a more serious charge. Melina enlisted the help of Mark Henry to protect herself from Batista. Dave denied the harassment allegations during a segment where Henry appeared to question Batista on what he would have done if Mark had molested him instead. She never said no. She never said stop. What if it was the other side? What if it was me? 
taking advantage of you. The angle came to an abrupt end a few weeks later after Batista was forced to relinquish the World Heavyweight title due to a legit injury, thus facing a lengthy spell on the sidelines. Life appeared to imitate art as Batista and Melina began to date in real life around this time, and it was a relationship that caused a lot of controversy backstage. The WWF previously featured the topic in our last example on an episode of Raw at the end of 1999, when Triple H was said to have drugged, married, and then consummated his marriage with Stephanie McMahon, all of which was done against her will. Stephanie was later revealed to have been in cahoots with Triple H, but for a few weeks it was believed the game had performed each of these acts on his own accord. All right, Triple H, come on out, come on out, you rapist! Many fans forget that just weeks before Hunter marries Stephanie, DX appeared to kidnap Steph backstage and subsequently have their way with her. <laughs> However, on the next episode of SmackDown, the girl involved was revealed to be a drama student disguised as McMahon. Billy Gunn still claimed to have had intercourse with the student, but Triple H assured everyone she was just acting. That broad was not acting because I think I punctured one of her lungs. WCW were a promotion that also conducted several distasteful angles, such as when they exploited Scott Hall's alcoholism in 1998 in a storyline that has been widely buried by fans. Whose life has fallen apart. Oh, wait, whoa. I've seen it all. A little beverage break. Yeah, we have seen just about everything. Yeah, and uh, as you can see, it hasn't. Oh, yeah. The WWF also acknowledged Scott's drinking issues during his rivalry with Stone Cold in 2002. One thing that might be forgotten about this feud is that Hall was on alcohol medication at the time, where any exposure to alcohol would make him ill. So it raised concern when Austin poured beer on Scott in numerous off-the-air in-ring segments. This annoyed Kevin Ash, who had previously informed the WWF brass that Hall had been taking his medication. Apparently, Nash said this on the night of the NWO's return at No Way Out. However, there are conflicting reports that Scott went out partying with the Godfather after the pay view. Another risque WCW angle involved Randy Savage, his girlfriend Gorgeous George, and the worm Dennis Rodman. On the July 26, 1999 Nitro, Rodman kidnapped Gorgeous George. From there, he brought her back to his trailer and violated George against her will. Unlike our previous entries covering this topic, Rodman was said to have actually gone through with the act in kayfabe. Once you go black, you never go back, baby! <laughs> One of the few other times this type of crime occurred in wrestling was when Brian Pillman had control of Terry Runnels for 30 days in 1997, resulting in the infamous XXX file segments. Then there was the time that Kane forcibly planted his seed in Lita in 2004. We've touched on the contentious nature of the WWF's programming during the late 90s and early 2000s already. But our next example was one of the catalysts for the company toning down aspects of the product and changing how they present segments. It occurred on the October 4th, 2004 edition of Raw. The show was significant not just because it emanated from the legendary Madison Square Garden, but also because many of WWE's sponsors and corporate parties were in attendance. Therefore, Vince McMahon wanted all the talent to be on their best behavior. With that in mind, giving Ric Flair a live mic in the opening segment probably wasn't the best idea. Flair and Triple H opened Raw to talk about the upcoming Taboo Tuesday pay-per-view. Rick ran down his opponent for the show, Randy Orton. Nage called Orton a virgin at Killing Legends before Flair then told us what he personally does to virgins. The line enraged Vince McMahon due to its graphic nature and because of the corporate presence at the show. I look at you and say virgin and you know how many virgins I have made on the network version of this Raw, Rick's promo has been edited down so as to remove the Virgin's bleeding line. Former WWE head writer Brian Gerwitz spoke about how Flair's comments on the night changed Vince's attitude towards the approval process when it came to promos. When he said that, there was a noticeable shift in the amount of uh, the approval process. The WWE would eventually turn PG in 2008, and one of the last edgy storylines they did before going PG involved Michelle McCool and her on-screen boyfriend at the time, Chuck Palumbo. Domestic abuse hasn't been explained too often in wrestling, and anytime it has, naturally things haven't come off well. The Palumbo and McCool storyline also came off in poor taste. It began after McCool inadvertently cost Chuck multiple matches. Palumbo reacted angrily each time. Meanwhile, McCool was seen sporting a black eye, hinting that Chuck may have struck her off screen at some point, although this was never brought up or mentioned on television. Palumbo cemented his heel turn after Michelle was caught in the crossfire of his assault on Jamie Noble. Following this, Chuck continued to torment McCool while also destroying her new boyfriend, Noble. The storyline 
Showdown was eventually dropped. Palumbo continued to wrestle sporadically thereafter until he was released by WWE whilst he was recovering from a shoulder injury. Had this angle took place in the Attitude Era, or even a few years prior, it would have been far darker. But by 2008, storylines such as this one felt outdated, given the direction WWE's product was going in. I thought that was just tasteful. I get it, I'm mm. playing a part, so I did what I was you know, paid to do. And then where do you go from there? It's rare to see animals involved in wrestling, much less a storyline. Al Snow and his dog Pepper's feud with the Big Boss Man is one of the most infamous examples. Try not to get one of them uh, paws stuck in your teeth. 100% grade A peppers. No, no, no. Tastes like chicken. However, Jake Roberts and his snake Damien's rivalry with Earthquake came first and was just as grim given what took place. After their match, Earthquake tied Roberts up in the ropes, forcing Jake to watch his snake Damien being attacked. Obviously, there was no snake in the bag. It was actually pantyhose stuffed with 60 pounds of hamburger meat. Speaking of burgers, the next month, Earthquake appeared on an episode of Primetime Wrestling where he fed Vince McMahon, Bobby Heenan, and Lord Alfred Hayes. After giving each man a few bites, Earthquake revealed they had just been eating the remains of Damien. Now, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out our similar video on 10 of the craziest wrestling pranks caught on camera. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.